Instatic core ideas are notebooks and cells. Notebooks are a group of cells and you can have more than one notebook. Uh, here is I made the notebook title notebooks and cells and I can create a new one hitting the plus icon. It will create a new one and give a random, uh, not random title, uh, default title. And you can rename it here. Uh, and you can search through notebooks by clicking the search and you can filter and select the notebook you can work on. Each notebook has one or more cells, there's all these uh, white squares and you can add one after each cell by clicking the blue button after the cell and before by clicking the one before. And by default the cell will give you a, a cell type picker which uh, lists all the cells and we are going to explore each uh, type of cell now. First to start with we need some data so we are going to start uh, exploring the source uh, cells. First the ones that involve uh, files and in this case the CSV file. So I select the CSV file uh, cell and it will allow me to configure how the CSV file is going to be processed because CSV files have different formats. The defaults, the defaults are okay so I will collapse this. You can drag and drop a, a CSV file here or you can click and select one from your computer and it will be displayed here. Every time you drop a new one or uh, you select a new one it will be updated here. This is the main data structure and uh, the main way to manipulate data inside the aesthetic is a table that has rows and columns. The columns have names. The column names are repeated at the bottom for easy drag and drop. And you can paginate and you can collapse and expand. And the table has also attributes like the size. It has 378 rows. Later we will go into interact with the table and see how um, how you can interact with it. But now let's go to the next uh, file source. In this case, spreadsheet file. Again, you can uh, drag and drop a file here. I'm going to select an Excel spreadsheet. It's similar to a table, but the, the columns are uh, named uh, numerically, column one, two, three, and so on. And the rows also are one, or two, or three. And you can also collapse and paginate. And you can select if the spreadsheet has more than one sheet, you can select here at the bottom. As you can see, the usually CSV and tables have columns with names and uh, each column has uh, all the values from the same type. Usually to, to make spreadsheets that are kind of like tables, the first row has the column names and then all the, the row has the values. We will see how to extract this information uh, from a spreadsheet later. And, but other than that, it's similar to a table. The third uh, file type and the third type of data you can have as an input is uh, JSON. Here the JSON file. I will select the JSON file now. And in this case uh, a JSON file is a data structure used by many programmers and tools and it's more like a tree, not a table. And so here I have a list of lists and you can paginate through the items of a list or a nested list. You can collapse and expand different sections. And you can have uh, either values, lists, or uh, key value pairs. And in this case, they are all lists. And other sources, um, for example, one that uh, may generate JSON is the HTTP source, which makes a request to an API or a service and returns the result. And in this case, by default, it's configured to uh, fetch the launches information from the SpaceX API every five minutes. And it will auto detect the content type, for example, if it's JSON, if it's a CSV, or if it's a spreadsheet. So if I apply that, it will fetch uh, the launches information. And when it loads, it will display it here. As you can see, it's also JSON, like the one before. Uh, but in this case, we have uh, a more complex structure and it has key value pairs. It's a list of key value pairs that they also inside may have lists themselves. There are mostly key value pairs. So this is an API. It will run this HTTP request uh, periodically. And um, other options, more streaming options are PubNub. This is a PubSub service uh, on the internet and you can configure the channel and the subscription key. It's by default it's configured for a, a sample source that generates some uh, random market orders. And if I hit apply, it will uh, display the information here. For many of the sources, you can pause if it's moving too fast. Uh, so you can work with one value, but if you want to work 
explore the recent values you can use this slider to see the 10 most recent values this also applies for other sources we will see later MQTT is really similar to PubNav uh, it's used in Internet of Things uh, it generates a stream of values usually it's like this JSONs uh, in this case I don't have a, a broker configured so I cannot um, uh, show you the values but it will be really similar to this one and continuing with the sources and uh, some similar to a spreadsheet but it's uh, data from wiki pages let's pause this and collapse uh, it's wiki tables you can specify the the page on wikipedia and the language and it will fetch all the tables from that and it will present it as a spreadsheet so each table in the page will be a, a sheet and you have to understand the meaning of which uh, table you want from the Wikipedia page but it's really useful to extract data from Wikipedia that has a lot of data if we want to, uh, similar to PubNav but uh, in case you want to send data and you don't have uh, a source and you want to make it simple you can send it to Instadec directly and it will look uh, work like PubSub you specify a channel and what's the format and it will listen and whenever you push some value to this channel it will appear here and a sample source when you want to play with InstaDeck and try something uh, but you don't have any data to play with you can play with the clock which will you can select the interval at which it will tick and for example every second it will generate a new uh, key value pair of all the pieces of, of, of the current time so this one is really useful to, to play with the tool I think we already covered all the sources so let's go on to how do we work with data once we have um, the data we want and for that we are going to use select first uh, select is a way to extract some fields and manipulate them uh, from other from other cells so let's add a new cell here and select and select select uh, in this case we want to extract uh, for example the product line which is C8 and the sales column from this spreadsheet it will give them names we can give them better names C8 is the product and C3 is let's call it total and we want to skip the first row because it's the name of the table so I will click here here is a slice of rows and I will say that I want from the second one and now we have the data we want uh, in the select we can also add calculated fields for example let's say we want to add the, the VAT total with VAT and we have a new calculated field set to zero if we click on the zero we get a formula editor and we want to do a multiplication of the total by 1.19 for example the VAT in Germany and we can add this new calculated field to the columns and it will appear here so this is how do you select to extract um, values from other uh, sources and if we have a table already we can use for example the group by if we want to calculate the attendance by team we can drag the attendance column here select sum as the operation and select the home team and we will have a uh, attendance by home team if we sort the output uh, we can see that Manchester United is the team with the most attendance and we can do more than like that for example attendance by home team and um, uh, we will do it later the the other operation we can do is multi-select and this is to to make multiple queries that generate the same structure and uh, they are all uh, added one after the other for example here we have home team and away team and home score and away score and uh, a team may play home and away so we if we want to add all this, the the goals that a team made either home and away we have to do two queries and add them up so I will select a uh, home team and home score and as you can see I have a like a mirror query after the first one and I can add more uh, I will remove it because we only need two but on the mirror queries we can have a different configuration so I will drag the away team here and the away scores here and I will rename the columns 
I will rename this to score because now it scores for home and away and I will rename this to team and as you can see the changes I do on the main query also apply to the mirror queries and I can have a calculated field called type because we want to make a difference between the first query and the second so I can say home for the first one and away for the second one so the, the structure of the of the query is the same but the values are different so I drag the type to select and now it's on the on the result and I can reorder team type and score. If you see here we have 756 uh, and we here we have half because the query is running twice once for this configuration and once for this configuration and it's adding them one after the other we can have more than two and the sources can be different uh, cells they don't have to come from the same cell so it's a way to to add uh, selections from different things uh, on the same result. Now that we have this, uh, this set of uh, results we can do a group by again and we can sum the scores by a team and it, this will give us the, the total goals by team and we can sort them and see which team made the most goals but we can make a difference so we can sum them but by team and type so now we have three columns so if we sort by team and type we have each team and type and the goals and now let's see these are like processing nodes, which they take some source and generate some result. And then we have sinks. Uh, in this case, uh, for now, we only have a chart. Well, and, and a grid. I will see it later. So a chart basically is like a select, but instead it, it generates a result, like a select, but also generates a chart. So we want to chart score sum by team, by type. Well, let's do it by team. So it tells me what kind of information it can show and I can select for example a bar chart and I can sort by score sum. And now I can do something similar so I can select here and clone this chart and it makes a copy. So let's change the title from this one and goals by team. And this one I will add a, another uh, by here. I will add the type. So the type of, of charts uh, recommended are different now because I have two by. So it's a different kind of uh, chart. Let's rename this to uh, goals by type by team. And I can select the stacked chart and I can go to settings and reverse this team and type and I want the color to be by the type oops, and not by the team and I can sort this and now we have a goals by team and type let's do th this is a chart and um, we already have two and let's do another one another aggregation so we have attendance here so we can do a uh, group by some attendance by team and here I can do something just to show it because it may not make a lot of sense. Let's say we want to see the attendance by home team but uh, except when they play against Arsenal. So I will drag the value Arsenal on the column and I will drop it in condition. And here it appears and it will say where away team and I select the equals and I select the not equals. So now it will filter the matches uh, where the home team play against Arsenal as away team. So this is, you can add more than one condition and one condition doesn't make sense, but and this is just an example. So I can make a chart and chart attend sum by home team and select again a bar chart. It's getting boring, the charts. Uh, we will add more charts uh, in the near future, but this is okay for now. So now let's go over let's open the basket it's a way to collect things you can want to drop somewhere but they are spread around so you don't have to drag them too far away so I want to collect all the charts let's name this uh, attendant by team I will drag it here and now it's in the basket and the basket keeps at the top and calls by type by team 
goals by team. And now I can create here a grid, which is the one I wanted to show. And we can drag uh, attendance by team here, goals by team here. And now I can resize them. So the grid is a way to arrange different cells in a grid. And this grid can uh, be configured with different uh, layouts according to the resolution of the device that's uh, opening that grid. Uh, I will clear the, the basket so I have more space. And, and when you open this grid, you will see um, uh, the resolution that best fits your uh, your device if that uh, if that uh, resolution has uh, a grid that has some values if it's empty it will look for the closest layout that uh, fits your resolution but has some content so you don't have to create the layouts for all the resolutions you can create one if you are sure that uh, nobody will open it in a smartphone in the future we may if you open this layout in a smartphone we may make it vertical so you can see it but for now it uh, it's it's a good thing to do at least the layout for the biggest one and for the smallest one and uh, so it will pick uh, according to the resolution of, of the user and the grids you can share them we will see share in another case uh, but you can give a, a, a URL and you can share it and you will get um, you can share that URL to users and they can see it so I think I cover most of the cell types except note I think so note is a way to add uh, notes uh, if you are sharing a, a a notebook you may want to add notes between the, the calculations to explain what you're wanting to achieve or at the beginning to explain what that notebook is about or not for yourself to remember things you did and uh, it's a what you see is what you get editor uh, it's uh, powerful enough but uh, simple enough uh, we we add the, the features that you would expect from uh, what you see is what you get editor so you have bold italic underline mono spaced and you have title subtitle and four levels of titles a quote and bullet lists and numbered lists and you can nest them so you can add notes also to you can add any type of cell to uh, to uh, a grid uh, but they are also useful in notebooks and also, there are other types of, of uh, cells that are not that useful, but we want to keep the consistency. So if you want to know more about InstaDeck, you have a spreadsheet with our information. And if you want to know about the open source licenses we use, you also have a table with them. And you can even make charts with this. So this type is the link chart type. You can extract either the URL or the label, and you can aggregate by URL or label, for example. And and we also just to cover them because uh, you may have seen it in the middle you have the templates or examples and they are notebooks predefined with examples for different features of InstaDeck and you can pick one and follow it to understand more about them we will see them in a different video so this was notebooks and cells for InstaDeck and you watch the other videos uh, covering sharing and uh, templates bye